In this demonstration, we are going to implement the model equations for our dynamic model of an isothermal CSTR, continuously stirred tank reactor, and we're going to put, put those model equations into Simulink and simulate our system. So we're going to begin using our the tank model that we developed in a previous module, and we're going to copy and paste that, call it now reactor. I'll open that in Simulink. So you can see this is our tank model that we just copied and pasted, but we're going to transform it into a reactor model. So the first step, well, one of the first steps we can make is to introduce our new variables into the model. So in addition to outputting the outlet flow, the tank height, and the derivative of volume with respect to time, we're going to add in our new dynamic model variables, the derivative of the concentration of product A with respect to time, and similarly for component B. The model is going to have new input variables, so those are going to be the inlet concentration of reactant A, the concentration of reactant A that's actually in the tank, the concentration of reactant B that's in the tank, we still have tank diameter and our tank valve constant, and now we have an additional parameter which is K0 or the reaction rate constant. So we need to go in and tell Simulink what types of variables our inputs are. So I go to edit data, and all of these are, all the new input variables are classified as inputs, the output variables classified as outputs, we don't want to change those, but we do have this K not term, which is going to be a model parameter and not a model input that changes with time. So we apply those changes. We're going to keep all of the model equations that we developed previously, but now we're going to be adding in the new rate laws that we developed. So we have this differential equation, dCA dt, which is defined as our inlet flow times the initial concentration of component A in the inlet flow minus our outlet flow times CA and then minus what's being consumed by the reaction K naught times CA times volume and then we have minus CA times DV DT. So if you're wondering where these model equations came from, please see our previous video demonstration where we develop these model equations as a function of a, um, by using a component balance. This whole term is now divided by the tank volume. And just so that we can figure out what we're doing, if we come back and look at this model several months from now, we're going to put in our units and we're going to put in a description for the rate of change of concentration of A with respect to time. So we also need to include our balance equation for component B. So dCB dt, which is equal to minus Q out times CB. So this is the flow of component B that's leaving in terms of kilomoles per minute, plus what's being generated. minus this other term that was a result of applying the chain rule to our initial balance. So it looks like we are free of warnings and errors. It doesn't mean that something can't go wrong, but we're looking good so far. Okay, so we've defined this new, well, we've modified our tank model, so now it's a reactor model. I'm going to go ahead and change the function name to be reactor just to just for housekeeping purposes. We've only introduced one new parameter, so we need to make sure that we define that parameter. And the value of k naught was 0 0.12 minutes to the minus 1 power.
Okay, so now we can go in, we still have our diameter and our tank valve constant. And now we have our reaction rate constant defined here. So we need to load these, this data into the MATLAB workspace. So I need to go, before I run my simulation, I always need to make sure that I have loaded the parameters that I'm going to need in my simulation. So I just go ahead and click run. You can see that our parameters show up here. Now I should be able to go back to my Simulink model and I'll have to do some more configuration work here to make sure everything's going to the right place. So as you can see, by adding these new model variables, Simulink automatically recognizes that we need to have a place for these signals to come from and a place for these signals to go. The way that, we're, that we've set up the model by having our function output derivatives means we need to <coughs> integrate those signals and then cycle back the integrated state variable as an input. So DCA DT, that signal gets integrated and it comes back to be CA. And we need to define an initial condition <coughs> for the initial concentration of reactant A in the tank. So our initial condition is going to be 10, and this is 10 kilomoles per cubic meter. We're going to copy and paste that integrator and use the same thing for component B. We're going to cycle that integrated signal back to be an input in the differential equation. This is looking a little bit messy now, so it's always good to try and keep your model looking a little bit nicer, but sometimes it just gets a little bit ugly. Okay, so we have component A being cycled back around to A and B coming back around to component B. The initial condition for component B is going to be 5 kilomoles per meter cubed. So we've got everything we need except we need to define the inlet concentration of reactant A that's coming into the tank. So that is given by our problem definition. So 15 kilomoles per meter cubed is the concentration of component A. I'm going to go back to our library browser and get a new source and I'm just going to use a constant. We can change this later. We could do step changes here too if we wanted to test out dynamic responses, but for now we'll just use a constant and that is 15 kilomoles per cubic meter. So I believe we have everything we need now. We've got our MATLAB workspace loaded with our parameters. We've got our initial conditions defined. We're using the initial condition for tank volume that we used in the previous demonstration. And now we want to see what's happening to these signals. We want to see the results of the concentration um, of component A with respect to time and the same for B. So we're going to add new scopes onto there by dragging and clicking. So we're still going to be simulating for four hours or 240 minutes. And I'll save our model and I'll go ahead and click play. And if you remember from our previous demonstration, we were making a step change on the inlet flow rate from 8 cubic meters per minute to 10 cubic meters per minute. And that was happening at time t equals 120 minutes. So in our dynamic results of this model, we're going to see some changes happening at t equals 120. So if you remember our previous results, this should be unchanged. We haven't touched this balance equation, so we reach a steady state volume of a about 78 cubic meters. Once we make the step change, our volume increases to be over 120 cubic meters. So now let's look at the results of the model equations that we just developed. Here's the concentration of component A. Remember it's going to start out at an inlet concentration of 10 kilomoles per cubic meter. But as you can see, it quickly reacts and it reaches a steady state of about 6.9 kilomoles per cubic meter. When the inlet flow rate changes, remember suddenly we're putting in a lot more of component A. So that rate, I mean the concentration initially increases because we're putting in more of component A. However, it starts to decrease because now our tank volume is increased. So that means the reactants have more, um, more residence time in the tank and the reaction can happen at a faster rate. So we end up with a lower concentration of component A in the tank getting down to just over 6 kilomoles per meter cubed.
if we look at the component B, so it starts out at a lower concentration of 5 kilomoles per cubic meter. It eventually reaches a steady state value of about 8.2 kilomoles per cubic meter. The same changes, um, the step change in increasing our reactant flow rate coming into the tank has an initial um, decrease in component B because now we're putting in more of A. So naturally more of A in concentration means less of component B. But again, that higher tank volume means that our reaction now proceeds fast. I mean, our reaction now proceeds at a higher rate because our reaction rate is proportional to the volume in the tank. So that higher volume means we have a longer residence time in the tank for those components to react, which results in a higher concentration of component B.